don't understand. I could have had class. I could have been a contender. Hulk, little smash. This is Robinson. You're trying to seduce me. Here's Johnny. Hey, you never go ass to mouth. Now what is so damn funny? And here we go. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. Force will be with you. Always. But the truth! You can't handle the truth! Showtime, everybody! Showtime! Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Movie Club. Here on the Daceman Show and Fanboys Anonymous, I'm your host, Chris the Daceman Dace, for this month where we will be covering Disney films. Uh, joining me is a first-timer to the movie club, Mr. Chris Padre. What's crackalacking, everybody? Happening. Cracking. Yeah. So the first film we're going to jump into right away is The Jungle Book, the 1967 animated film. Not the other Jungle Book that just came out this month for April. Um... The Jungle Book is a 1967 American animated musical comedy film produced by Walt Disney, because this month is Disney movies, inspired by Rudyard Kipling's book of the same name. It is the 19th animated feature in the Walt Disney Animated Classic series, directed by Wolfgang Ritherman. Uh, It was the last film to be produced by Walt Disney, who died during its production. The plot follows Mowgli, a feral child raised in the Indian jungles by wolves, and his friends Bagheera, the panther, and Baloo the bear try to convince him to leave the jungle before the evil tiger, Shere Khan, arrives. So, Mr. Bumpadre, what we like to do on the show is, what was your first impressions back when you were like two watching this, when you watched this film? Uh, I really like those songs. Yes, those songs are phenomenal. Agreed. I'm not even sure I remember <laughs> anything else besides the songs. I remember Baloo's song specifically, and uh, The Bare Necessities, and then Want to Be Like You by King Louie. I remember um, the trumpet, or no, the elephants marching. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Forgot about that. Um, They briefly, I've seen the new movie. Uh, The only two songs to make the transition to the live-action film were Bare Necessities and Want to Be Like You. That's a shame. I know. They had the scene of the elephants marching, but they didn't do it like they did in the cartoon. And I swear Ka, the snake, used to have a song, too. I think that's correct. Yeah. But um, the casting, so it's like really old casting because this is a 1967 film. Charlie Chaplin. Uh, Was he in it? No, he's not in it. No, no. (laughs) Bruce Reitherman uh, played Mowgli. Uh, Phil Harris was Baloo. All right. Sebastian Cabot was Bagheera, Louis Prima was King Louis, George Sanders was Sher Khan, Sterile Holloway was Ka, uh, J. Pat O'Malley was Colonel Haith, the Indian elephant. Oh, yeah. Duh. Forgot about him. Um, and no other really notable names. Like, the, this is old casting. When we get to our other films here in the, the series, we'll be like, oh, well, we, we know those people. Well, here's an interesting thing you might not know, Chris Dace. George Sanders, yeah. voice of, I forget who you said, is Bernie Sanders' brother. Is he? No. <laughs> you know, you would have fooled me with that fact. Uh, he's the voice of Shere Khan. Right. You know what? If, if you look at his picture, <laughs> he could be. They've got the same, uh, well, no, Bernie's hair is just unstoppable. I took a guess. It was 40 years ago. It might be right. Yeah, he died in 1972. Oh. This is a sad time for Bernie. Yeah, there's a good chance he could be Bernie's maybe father. I'll look it up later. Songwriter, composer. I'm looking now at his Wikipedia page. Oh. Um, I don't think he's the father of Bernie Sanders. You are not the father. <laughs> now he's doing the little dance. I think that's how it goes. That's me. Um, so you said your favorite point of this movie was the songs. Were there any other highlights from this movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Well, it's, it's tough because these, these older movies were kind of like shot for shot of the book and not as – I don't want uh, – not catchy because the Bare Necessity song and stuff like that was catchy. Right. But I don't find myself going back to watch movies like The Jungle Book – or Cinderella, 
or Snow White. Snow White. Yeah. The the older movie, the older animation from Disney seems a little bit harder to swallow when it comes to a pill. I agree. Um, if you were going to give this, what we do usually at the end of it is a high point, low point. Uh, since there's only two of us, I doubt we're going to run the full 15 like we usually do. Um, but what would be your high point, low point of the Jungle Well, not you. We already talked about that. What would you give it on a rating 1 to 10 for the Jungle Book? Seven and a half. Nice. Personally, I, I think I'd give it a six. Uh, again, these older animation ones are hard to dive into, but the songs, Bare Necessities, and it's a classic. It is. And before we wrap up here on The Jungle Book, um, a thing we're going to find with actually all these films that are on the list, except one, they all had sequels. Interesting. Uh, the Jungle Book 2 came out in 2003. I never heard of that. Which, yeah, and that's what, 40 years after it? Yeah. Not even. Almost 40 years after the original movie. Uh, and the plot for that was... Um, Mowgli is now living in the man village with the girl who lured him in, which, side note, spoiler alert, if you watch the live action, he doesn't ever go into the village, which, that irritated me. Hmm. But, completely sidetracking. Uh, and Shanti, his adopted brother, Ran Ran Ranjan? Yeah. And their parents. So, however, Mowgli returns to the jungle for fun, and after nearly leading the other children of the village into the jungle, he is punished by his adoptive father for trying to lead them into danger. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Shere Khan has returned. Thought he died. Right. Uh, to Baloo and Bagheera as part of the jungle seeking revenge for what Mowgli did. So. That, that sounds dumb. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, and you know what's sad? I really think uh, there's a good chance Disney tries to make this considering Jungle Book did so well at the box office. Uh, they're going to do it that sequel now? I could see them trying to, uh, but again, it looked like Shere Khan died, uh, spoiler alert, in the live action one as well. Hmm. So, I don't know how, but the, the one thing that irked me was they, they did not have him go into the village like he does at the uh, original book and cartoon movie. Right. That is irksome. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, there you have it. Uh, Jungle Book, for all intents and purposes, in the book. Uh, check nice. out part two, where we'll be going into the 1992 film Aladdin, here on the Dace Man Show YouTube and fanboysanonymous.com. Welcome back to part two of the movie club here on the Dace Man Show and the Fanboys Anonymous. Uh, we are going to be talking about Aladdin, the 1992 Disney film. Myself and Mr. Pompadre, who's a first-timer here. Ooh. <laughs> and Aladdin is a 1992 American animated musical fantasy film uh, produced by Walt Disney, which is our theme for the month of April, and released by Walt Disney. Uh, Aladdin is the 31st animated feature film in the Walt Disney animated classic series, uh, and it follows the journey of a street rat who goes from rags to riches, uh, and you, showing that you can find love in any place, and the world is a lot happier when Robin Williams was in it. Just saying. That's right. So, initial reactions, Mr. Bompadre, on this movie? Um, it's a wonderful trip down a magical lane brought to you <laughs> by Robin Williams and the guy I don't know who voiced Aladdin. Uh, the vo guy who voiced Aladdin was Scott Winger? Winger? Scott Winger. Yeah. yeah. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, but uh, Brad Kane sung for him. Brad Kane. Okay. I didn't know there was different people. I guess yeah. that makes sense. Um, I love this movie. This movie is my favorite movie of all time when it comes to all the Disney animated features. It's, uh, it's number one for me. Um, the casting, of course, Robin Williams is the genie. Scott Wagner is the uh, is Aladdin. Uh, Jonathan Freeman is Jafar. Linda Larkin is Princess Jasmine. They actually hired someone to do Abu, Frank Welker. Hmm. Uh, Gilbert Godfrey is Iago. Yes. And Douglas Seal is the Sultan. So, very small cast when it came to this movie, but still one of my favorite movies. And I, I gotta say, uh, we talked about this a little bit with the Jungle Book. Everything did sequels, and Aladdin went on to do two more movies after this. The second movie uh, did not have Robin Williams in it. It had, um, God, what's his name? Dan, Dan Castanella. <laughs> 
I think if it was Gordon Ramsay, it would have made the movie a little bit better. Uh, but Return of Jafar had Dan Castanella or Castanella. He That's voices the, the Simpsons guy, right? Yeah, he voices Homer Simpson. Um, okay. Not that he did a bad job because he also voiced him in the cartoon series that they did for Disney. Um, but I feel like not having Robin Williams in that film took away from it. That being said. Do you think if Robin Williams was not the genie in this original one, it would not have been as successful? I do believe it would not have been as successful. He was a magical man who brought a smile to all of our hearts. I concur. I'm glad. Yeah, he's just, he's hilarious. And everything about Robin Williams as the genie is what I want in um, my animated movies. Just saying. I agree. Um, the movie itself uh, was released November 25th, 1992, and was the most That's successful my film. Is it really? No. Oh. <laughs> you and these random facts in the middle of uh, the, the pot, like these podcasts, I'm really believing you. Apparently, Sorry. Bernie Sanders' brother was in The Jungle Book, and you should go check out part one if you didn't, where we talked about The Jungle Book. Um, and apparently Chris Padre shares a birthday with Aladdin. Accurate. Which mathematically, I don't think that makes sense with your age. Ooh, I, I was late. <laughs> I was a late term baby. It's true. So like four years late. <laughs> you know how long an elephant holds a child? Four years. Accurate. <laughs> no, no, you're not going to burn me again. <laughs> Uh, but the movie was released November 25th, 1992, and was the most successful film of 92, earning over $217 million in revenue in the United States and over $504 million worldwide. Uh, the film has also won many awards, uh, most of them for its soundtrack, and has led to success in other material inspira- inspired by the film, including two direct-to-video sequels, Return to Jafar and Aladdin, King of Thieves. Uh, and the video game for Sega was amazing. I agree. I have that. That's fun. I need to let's play that one day. Do it. Uh, <laughs> what did you think of the soundtrack? Um, I think it's great. The singers for Aladdin and Jasmine are spectacular, and they melded very well in, um, I don't know the name of the song. A whole New Show World? The world. A Whole New World. There you go. Um, it was magical. Well, I, I think there's that. Um, the Friend Like Me. Uh, Genie's initial song when he gets rubbed, like pulled it out of the lamp. Uh, it, again, if it, if it wasn't Robin Williams, I don't think that song would have been as great as it was because if you listen to other copies of that song, mm-hmm. they're not they're not as fun. They're not as good. They're good, but they're not what this was. Um, oh, he's, he's very charismatic. Yeah, and he did the different voices throughout the song, and you have people who do the uh, Broadway musical that they've recorded them, and they try, but it's not as good. It's like you're not you're not Robin Williams, and that's a, again that's a huge standard and big shoes to fill. Right. Um, well, Genie doesn't wear shoes, but you're right. <laughs> he does occasionally. That's true. He has those parachute pants too. That is true. The man is a, like a fashion statement. Four right. fingers. No shirt, parachute pants, ponytail. Like the he was doing the Tony Stark hair before Tony Stark was doing it with the uh, facial hair. That's right. Um, but when it comes to that song, Neo, the, like in 2015, they released a, uh, a CD Disney did where they had a lot of the current artists redo some of the uh, to cover some of the music from the films, and Neo did "Friend Like Me," mm-hmm. and it was like a jazz cover that was. Not as fast paced and yeah, I don't know how that sounds. I don't it, like it. It's, it. it's just weird. It's slow and it's it. He's just too cool for the role. I mean, Ron Williams is really cool in the role, but he was just too cool. Like it was just I'm laid back. I'm in a jazz bar doing jazz things. Right. You, you want a friend like me? No, that's not the right fit. Yeah, it's like I don't want to be friends with you. I want to be friends with the other genie, Ron Williams, who's right up. I want to be friends with Robin Williams, too. Right? Man's a ball of charisma. Or was. Um, right. So, is it... Uh, we, we talked about... What's your favorite part of this movie? 
um, let's see, Aladdin and the monkey escaping the Cave of Wonders on a magic carpet. Uh, <laughs> I think one of my favorite had to be the uh, the monkey too. The monkey's interaction with like, don't he? He's loves riches. Why a monkey is obsessed with treasure? Right. I'll never get. But in that Cave of Wonders, he's just like dead set, and the carpet trying to pull him back. I don't know why. I laughed my ass off at it. Um, but the genie too. Again, I just can't stop singing praises to the genie. But uh, all his shtick was funny. Agreed. Um, a, a note to make about this: uh, Robin Williams had conflicts with the studio when they first did this. Uh, really? In gratitude uh, for his success with Touchstone Pictures' Good Morning Vietnam, Williams voiced Genie for the SAG scale price of seventy-five thousand, on condition that his name or image not be used for marketing, and his uh, character not take more than twenty-five percent of space on advertising artwork, since Williams film toys was scheduled to release one month after aladdin's debut uh for financial reasons the studio went back on their deal on both counts especially in poster art by having the genie in 25 percent of the image uh but having other major and supporting characters portrayed considerably smaller uh the disney hyperion book aladdin the making of the animated film listed both of williams characters the peddler and the genie ahead of the main characters but was forced to refer to him only as the actor signed to play the genie. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, which makes sense, because you can't... If you go on Spotify, you can't find A Friend Like Me by Robin Williams on there. Hmm. Which irritates me. Like, the whole album is there, but anything he sang is not. Wow. So, like, Prince Ali's not there, but I, I, I can't see it. It's kind of hard... Like, that had to be an awkward, like, contract negotiation. Right. You, you can't use my face, can't use anything. No. Yeah. It's but like, I'll do you, it. you know he is the selling point of this movie. Right. Why didn't you just give him a little bit more money? He, the movie made, what, $271 million, whatever it was? Right. Domestically. Yeah. So it's like, you knew you were going to make a lot of money. So, I don't know. Uh, the, the budget was $28 million. Box office was 504.1 by the end of it. Runtime's 90 minutes. So there you have it. That's Aladdin. Let's uh, let's get our rankings. Mr. Pompadre, 1 to 10, what are your thoughts on Aladdin? Aladdin the movie is a solid 8 out of 10. Nice. Just because we're on the scale of Disney, it's my all-time favorite. But no movie's perfect, so I'm giving it a 9. I love this film. I like that rating. Yeah, I love this film. So there you have it. Aladdin, we are departing your city of Agrabah, and we're heading to the next film, which is The Lion King, here on this month, April's Movie Club, uh, where we do Disney films. So make sure you check out Part 3, which will be coming at you on our playlist next, or go back and check out Part 1 if somehow you got Aladdin before you got Jungle Book. Just saying. If anything, you should have got Jungle Book first, because that's the one that's trending. Who knows? So make sure you check out Part 3 here on The Movie Club. Welcome back to part four, or three, part three of the movie club here on our movie club for the month of April, the Dace Man Show. This, this is terrible. Hold on. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> three, two, one. Welcome back to part three of the movie club here on the Dace Man Show and Fanboys Anonymous. Uh, I am joined by Mr. Bompadre. Hello. As we break down Disney films. So if you checked out part one, we did the Lion, uh, the Jungle Book. You did part two, we did Aladdin. Now we're doing the Lion King for part three. Uh, Lion King was released in 1994. Uh, it is the American animated epic musical. They use the word epic. Uh, produced by Walt Disney Feature Animation and released by Walt Disney Pictures. And it is the 32nd animated feature in the Walt Disney Animated Classics series. The story takes place in the kingdom of... Uh, Lions in Africa, and was influenced by William Shakespeare's Hamlet. The film was produced during a period known as the Disney Renaissance. Mr. Bompadre, first impressions on The Lion King. I really like Timon and Pumbaa. They're hilarious. <laughs> Who, I think, got a spinoff from this movie. If I'm yeah, not they're in, like, Lion King two and a half is all theirs, or something like that. Yeah. 
Uh, they, yeah, they came out with um, direct-to-video follow-up to sequel The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, in 98, and the prequel parallel Lion King 1 and a half, and two television series, Timon and Pumbaa, and The go. Lion Guard. I think The Lion Guard just came out this year. That's right. I've watched it. It's decent. It's no Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, but like you said, I think Timon and Pumbaa, I remember watching that as a kid because they were the shit. That's right, and the fart jokes. Yeah. Oh, big time on the fart jokes. Uh, Timon was voiced by Nathan Lane, and Pumbaa was vo- uh, voiced by Ernie Sabella. I don't know him. I don't know him. I thought it was Chris Farley. No. <laughs> the, <laughs> if that was Chris Farley, that would have been amazing. <laughs> Down right. by the river! <laughs> God, that would be great. <laughs> Um, Matthew Broderick was, uh, played Simba, and Joseph Williams provided adult Simba's singing voice. Uh, Mark Henn and Ruben A. Aquina respectively served as the supervising animators for the young and adult Simba. Uh, James Earl Jones was Mufasa, Simba's father. Excellent. Uh, the best bad guy on the planet, Jeremy Irons, was Scar. Um, Rowan Atkinson was Zazu. My favorite. Um... Whoopi Goldberg was Shenzi, one of the cheetahs. Uh, Cheech Marin was uh, Banzai, the other cheetah. Didn't know that. Uh, Jim Cummings was Ed. I don't know what... They're, they're hyenas, right? Oh, hyenas, yeah. I don't know why I kept calling them cheetahs. See? That's fair. Ed um, was the, the stupid hyena. And Robert Guillamo was Rafiki. I don't know what he's from. I don't know. Uh, but the, as you can tell, it's a pretty an all-star cast. We have uh, Broderick, James Earl Jones, Jeremy Irons, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Rowan Atkinson is Mr. Bean. That's uh, right. Nathan Lane was Timo, uh, who plays Timon, does a lot, did a lot of uh, Broadway stuff. He was the producers with Broderick. So they probably met here first. Well, I don't know. <laughs> is, is that your fact? Yes. Did you know Nathan Lane met Matthew Broderick for the first time on the set of recording voices for The Lion King? <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> From our fact checker, Chris Bombadre. It's always but, true. Yeah. One, one interesting thing you brought up uh, prior to us recording this. Um, I don't know if you want to share it. Uh, yeah. Um, there's several different teams at Disney's producing movies at the same time. And apparently... Their Team A was working on the Pocahontas movie, while their Team B was working on the Lion King movie. So the less successful, apparently, teams doing the Lion King. But that uh, is now one of their most successful franchises, where Pocahontas, pretty sure that fell by the wayside. Yeah, i got to be honest with you. I, I don't remember anything about Pocahontas. Right. Like, There's Colors in the Wind. Uh, that's all I know. Yeah, it, it, it's been on some games. But like you said, Lion King obviously has taken off tenfold you don't really get to see too much um, uh, what, what more say you don't see Pocahontas too much in the whole world of Disney. I think they did a sequel to Pocahontas, but like she had a kid. Oh, that's um, Pocahontas. Pocahontas. <laughs> is a boy. Her, her brother that moves to Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good. oh, it's uh, Pocahontas. Can I get a pizza? <laughs> He invented the pizza there. Yeah. Way back when. Polka Thomas. I'm <laughs> to a theater near you. <laughs> this fall. I would actually see Polka Thomas. I would too, over Pocahontas, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the scores were written by Hans Zimmer. Uh, and this is another decent soundtrack that had, like, Elton John on it. Um, man, he did most of the songs, didn't he? Um, I think so. Crocodile Rock. I don't think Crocodile Rock was in this. Oh. Um, but some of the songs out there were Circle of Life, uh, I Just Can't Wait to Be King. Love it. Uh, be Prepared. Nice. Hakuna Matata. Two words. <laughs> Wonderful phrase. Uh, for those of you out there listening, we got screwed in trivia because somebody said that was one word. Suck it. Uh, and Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which was Elton John. That's correct. Uh, but John and uh, Tim Rice and who was the other guy? I forget who the other guy was. But Tim Rice and some guy named John. Oh, Elton John. Duh. Tim Rice yeah. and Elton John <laughs> wrote those five songs. So 
it's a great uh, Disney has one thing they do, and you're gonna hear it through all four of these films is they they nail it on catchy fucking tunes. Nailed it. They did. So it's uh, you know it's pretty good, pretty pretty, pretty good. <laughs> it's a good film if you're thinking about uh, succeeding your brother as king. It's a good <laughs> lesson actually. Yeah, push him off a cliff. Which but you might die later. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, you're, you're going to have a nephew that kicks your ass down the road. Um, shit, that could happen to me. Um, one thing we did notice, and uh, Tony, who runs Fanboys Anonymous, where you can catch this show, uh, cheap plug there, um, is in the Jungle Book they just released, there was a very Lion King-esque scene where Mowgli falls down a hill, and Sher Khan was like at the top and Tony just leaned over and goes, are we going to watch the Lion King now? As a stampede came right after, right at Mowgli. Hmm. Um, did you cry at that scene? I meant it. <laughs> yes. I knew it. I didn't. I laughed. I cheered. I thought the guy pushing him off was a good guy. Oh gosh. Cause if you think about it at this point in my life, it's 1994. Right. I'm a kindergartner. So already I know everything that this world has to offer. Mm -hmm. I'm well knowledge. The voice of Mufasa sounds a shit like Darth Vader. For good reason. And if I'm just going to say it, Jeremy Irons, as Scar, killed Darth Vader. Kylo Ren's not going to be happy. No, Kylo Ren's going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing I, I think is neat to notice, and you'll probably see in all these films around this time... And I think Little Mermaid might have been the first one to do it. All the villains are green. Like, when they're being evil and, like, devilish. I think if it's even, in, like, Maleficent had it, too. When smoke appears, it's always green around them. Why do you think they went with the green color and not, like, red? Uh, I would think red as well. I mean, green, perhaps, to evoke um, greed and envy is what drives them to be villainous. There you go. That's actually a very good answer. Like, probably one of the best I've ever heard on these podcasts. <laughs> oh, well, then I should have said, because they all like green beans. <laughs> <laughs> that seems more on par when it comes to a show that I'm involved in. <laughs> because they're farting. <laughs> That's the answers I get out of, like, a Gibby <laughs> when you ask him his opinion. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to wrap up Lion King before we head to our fourth and final film. Do you have a rating? Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. What, what would you rate The Lion King? You know what? I don't even like cats. So I'm <laughs> going to give Lion King a solid 7 out of 10. Just because you don't like cats? <laughs> that's correct. Oh, that's fair. Uh, I am not a fan of this movie because it tried to make me feel things. Um, and because I made the realization in the middle of this podcast that my brother has a kid. And if I were to push my brother off a hill... His kid might kill me like 20 years later. So I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Just because I don't want to give anything the same rating you give it. <laughs> That's fair. There you have it. Lion King, we are leaving the pride and we're heading to ancient Greece in our next film. Bam. Segway Master. Um, here on the Movie Club and Fanboys Anonymous. So make sure you check out Part 4 where we review Hercules. Uh, and if you missed, for some reason, parts one and two, go back and check those out. Uh, check them out. You, you should be listening to part three right now. Well, this, this would be awkward if you didn't realize that. Uh, so stick around as we head into part four. Welcome to part four of April's Movie Club here on the Dace Man Show and Fanboys Anonymous. I'm your host, Chris Dace. Joining me is Mr. Bumpadre. What's up, fools? <laughs> we have already reviewed The Jungle Book. The Lion King, and Aladdin back in parts one through three. Not in those order, because I'm stupid and wouldn't give you the right order. Mm. Uh, so you can go back and check those out if you want. On part four, we will be reviewing Disney's Hercules as part of our Disney theme we're doing this month. Disney! Disney! We pretty much cheated because the Jungle Book came out, so that's, that's our logic there. Uh, Hercules is a 1997 American animated musical fantasy comedy drama. Bam! It's a mouthful. Uh, produced and released by Disney, uh, and is the 35th animated feature in the Walt Disney Animated Classic series. The film was directed by Ron Clemens and John Musker. The film is loosely based on the legendary hero Hercules, 
known in the film by his Roman name, Hercules, not the Greek one, the son of Zeus in Greek mythology. Hmm. Bam. Initial thoughts on Hercules from Padre. You know, I like everything mythological, and maybe this was the start of it. I was a nine-year-old boy when this came out. Actually, I was eight. (laughs) And and it was very interesting to see the different um, gods, etc. And Hercules is cool because he kills different beasts, etc. Yeah. No, I'll give you that. One thing when it comes to, like, I love Greek mythology. I actually took a Greek mythology class in high school because of how much, probably because of this movie, like you said. This is really my first exposure to it. And if if you were eight, I was probably eight or maybe not. Twelve. I'm not that much older than you, jerk. <laughs> um, but like you said, it, it's very, it's a weird twist on, uh, it's an upbeat twist on Greek mythology. Because if you get into real Greek mythology, dear God, it's depressing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, some pretty weird stuff. Everything ends in a tragedy. Everybody's banging their mom. Just weird shit. And Zeus is a whore that can't keep it in his pants, which they kind of tried to say in this. Like, I think that was neat how they avoided that. Right. Rather than Zeus went down and tagged a human, and that's why Hercules ha- isn't full god, it was Hercules had or Zeus had a baby with the real ma, like his wife, did it the right way, and then Hades just stole his power. <laughs> Rather than like Greek mythology, where they said, no, 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 Zeus bangs like all the women he wants by deceiving them, and he cheats on his wife all the time, and Hercules has got to earn his stripes to see get with his dad and meet his stepmom, who. It's totally cool with Zeus banging everybody because I think she goes and bangs everybody. Uh, that's correct. Greek orgy, pretty much. Um, <laughs> words are synonymous. You say Greek, I know orgy. Yeah, it makes sense. So apparently the development of Hercules began in 1992. The film was released in 97, for those of you that didn't realize that. But the follow- it was following a pitch adaptation of the Hercules mythology stories by animator Joe Haldar. Um, yeah, Joe Haldar. Meanwhile, Ron Clemens and John Musker redeveloped the idea for Treasure Planet following the critical and commercial success of Aladdin. Their project was removed from development in 93, and Musker and Clemens joined Hercules later that same year. Following an unused treatment by Hadar, Clemens and Musker studied multiple interpretations of the Greek mythology before abandoning Zeus's adulterous affair with (laughs) Alchemy. I can't say that. Uh, the project underwent multiple story treatments and a first script draft being inspired by the screwball comedy films of the classic Hollywood era and popular culture of the 1990s before Donald McHenry, Bob Shaw, and Irene Mechie were brought on board to shorten the script and deliver additional humor. Whew, it's a mouthful. Uh, a lot of history. Right? So apparently this film took a, almost five years to get it going. Um, the cast which is another star studded. Like this is around the time where Disney said, Hey, let's go get some big names for all the stuff we do. Uh, Danny DeVito plays Phil. Uh, James Woods plays Haiti. Susan Egan plays Megra. Rip Torn is Zeus. Nice. Uh, Bobcat Goldwaith and Matt Frewer are pain and panic. And tail Donovan is or Tate Donovan is Hercules. Don't. That's correct. I love Tate Donovan from Friends series. He played Joshua. Really? Um, Is this another one yes. where you're burning me? <laughs> no, that's a that's an actual fact this time. Oh, I did research. It says he's a Jersey boy, too. Oh, I don't believe you for one second. <laughs> I, I'm probably on the same site where you got your fact. No? Okay. I, I can't name it for copyright reasons. Oh, uh, fair enough. So, uh, great movie. This is another one where Disney nailed it out of the park with the soundtrack, wouldn't you say? That's correct. I enjoy every song. I remember there are women singing on pottery. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and you know what? The Gospel Truth was the one song where they went through three parts where they told yeah. the whole story of Zeus. That's correct. Uh, and then there's the hit, uh, Go the Distance. Which I prefer the one by Roger Bart that's in the movie, but Michael Bolton did a recording as well. Hmm, 
I didn't hear the Bolton one, but I am a fan of his. It's slower. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, that's like, well, of course, it's got more words than what is sang in the movie because there's that whole montage of I'm climbing a mountain to get to Zeus's chapel or whatever. Right. Um, Mount Olympus. Mount Olympus, yeah. Um, then there's the One Last Hope by Danny DeVito, which, uh, who would have thought Danny DeVito could sing? Nobody. The guy's like three feet tall. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he was coming off of, like, Batman, or Return of Batman, <laughs> where he played the Penguin. <laughs> That's right. It was very, uh, polar opposite. Roles. Yeah, he was terrifying in that movie. So as a kid, it's like, hey, oh my god, it's Cobblepot. Oh, it's terrifying. Um... So there's Go the Distance, One Last Hope, Zero to Hero. Um, we talked about this when it came to Aladdin in uh, 2015 when they released that CD where artists covered songs from different movies. Ariana Grande covered Zero to Hero. Really? Yeah. I don't like Ariana Grande. Really? Yeah, she's a bitch. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Ariana Grande, you're a bitch. Total bitch. Total bitch. Sue me. <laughs> uh, but the sad thing, again, Disney just nails it with these soundtracks. And it really captures the movie. And I think a lot of these movies wouldn't have been this great if they didn't have these songs in it. I totally agree. Um, what was your favorite part of Hercules? Um, let's see. It's been a while since I've seen it. But when he defeated the many-headed Hydra. Oh, nice. Where he... He, like, cut off one, and then he's like, oh, I did it! Yeah, look at me! I'm the man! <laughs> and then he and then faced, just... like, 80. <laughs> right. I, I like the whole montage with him training with Phil. And again, it's because of the damn song, but... Right. Danny DeVito is hilarious. He's another one. Like, I can't see anyone else playing that role besides Danny DeVito. Be I agree. They offered me the role. I was too busy, luckily. <laughs> I was too busy playing Pokemon trying to catch them all because this is around the same time that came out. True. Yeah. So when you're trying to be the greatest master, you really don't have time to go train gods. <laughs> um, the sh it obviously went on to have an animated series that was syndicated by Disney TV. Uh, there was n a direct-to-video prequel, uh, Hercules Zero to Hero, which served as the pilot to Hercules the animated series. So... They did this with Star Wars Rebels as well. The first episode of Star Wars Rebels was an hour long, and they called it a movie. But really, it was just two episodes that ran back to back. Right. So th this is the only one that did not get like a sequel yet. Because yet, as you can tell with the Jungle Book, they waited forty years before they did it. We're not at the forty year mark yet. My sister, right. the sister's only nineteen. She's the uh, marker here. Four or five. Accurate. <laughs> Thank you for checking my math, sir. No problem. Um, so, any last thoughts on the movie Hercules? Uh, Hercules Hercules gets remade um, by different studios all the time. And while you think The Rock might be the best Hercules, you're wrong. It's actually Tate Donovan, who also portrays Joshua and Friends, as the <laughs> best Hercules there ever was and or will be. I can't argue with that. I think the year that the Rock Hercules movie came out, there were two Hercules movies that came out the same year. Yeah, one was him, and one was, I think, a guy from, like, Twilight. Yeah. The, obviously, the Twilight guy is bombed. Right. Because uh, he's not Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, but, it was, um, I think, Kellen Lutz is his name. But, like you had said, there has been many variations and takes on Hercules. Hell, I think around the time this movie came out, wasn't there a TV series, Hercules, with Kevin Zorbo? Yes. So I think that was around the same time. I might be completely off on dates. I don't know. Never heard uh, of it. But the, it's always interesting to watch the takes on Greek mythology. And, of course, if it's Disney, it's not going to be as dark. Right. Although, I'm wondering, uh, the one thing is, we, I should have asked this question with every other video. Um, they just did the remake of Jungle Book 2 live action. Would you want to see Disney's version of Hercules as a live action? Um, to be honest, I think it'll be like, not to be funny, I think it'll be like a lot of the other ones that are live action, animated, Disney, they go together hand in hand practically, mm -hmm. barring uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, so you know what? I don't think it would do so well. 
Yeah, I think it'd be tough to because everybody goes in with expectations of what they had as a childhood. Like Jungle Book, I went with a friend the second night. I, I seen it twice. I don't know why. Nerd. Uh, yeah, I know, right? She was adamant that it, the movie was gonna be terrible because they messed with the classic. Although, I I think they did very well. Uh, to Disney's perspective, they're really introducing the Jungle Book to a whole new generation. There, there's That's true. Everybody who was at the theater and everybody who's at the drive-in who watched Jungle Book, they're, the original came out in 67. So there's no way they, they watched the original. I don't even have a DVD of the original. I have it on VHS somewhere. Man, so it's crazy. Can't, can't play it, though. Yeah. So it, it's crazy. So it should be interesting. Maybe Hercules won't be one of the quickest ones they get out, but maybe 40 years, maybe we'll see it. 50 years. Damn. We're old. Well, they're old. Not us. Yeah. Movie's old. <laughs> so, uh, this yeah, this movie's almost twenty years old. That's uh, ugh, yep. that hurts. Yeah. Uh, what would you rank this movie? Hercules, the myth of a Herculean god. I give it a solid eight out of ten. Ah, oh, damn it! You can use the same rating if you want. It's gonna be that good. This is my second favorite film in the Disney animated classics. Uh, if you rank my top three, it goes Aladdin, Hercules, Lilo, and Stitch, which we may cover Lilo and Stitch one day down the road. Like, the whole thing, because there's like eight movies. Um, yeah, there's like three or four Lilo and Stitches. Oh. Yeah. Never, I never knew that. You need to catch up on it, because we need to watch that. Um, <laughs> um, I would give it an eight out of ten as well. I gave Aladdin a nine. Hercules is obviously an eight. Uh, and I really don't have anything bad to say about the movie. Like, I've watched this thing on Netflix, like, four times. And, A, I watched it on Netflix four times because it's on Netflix, and Netflix, you just hit play. Uh, Aladdin, I've watched less because you have to go put up, put the DVD in. That's a lot of work for some people. Yeah, you know we got time for that. So, there you have it. This month's uh, movie club is in the books. Disney Films, we covered uh, parts one through four. We covered The Jungle Book, we covered Aladdin, we covered Lion King, and we just wrapped up Hercules. So what we do here at the movie club before we end the show, we like to go around the horn and get up to date with our co-hosts and see what they're doing. So, Mr. Potter, do you have anything to plug? Um, I will plug The Dace Man Show, thedacemanshow.com, facebook.com slash thedacemanshow. Go nice. to it. Nice. Uh, and I'll just piggyback off of that. Uh, check out our Twitch Dace Man and friends. Follow us on Twitter at the Dace Man Show. Follow me on Twitter at the Dace Man. And you can check out all the previous uh, movie clubs on fanboysanonymous.com. So uh, there you have it, folks. The movie club is in the books. Look forward to seeing you next month in May. Hope you enjoyed. And remember, keep on watching all those movies. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response. Were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? I'm too old for this. Good day, sir! You stay classy, San Diego. Rose? Well, we're going, we don't need Rose. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I'm finished. That'll do, people. That'll go. Hasta la vista, baby. Hey, everybody! We're all gonna get late! You're still here? It's over. Go home.